Remember it's remaining 2 cm. It's now those 2 cm that we use and drain. Wait for me in the building construction class. So now I'm going to I'm going to shade this area. I'm going to shade this dart area so that you know that the dart is no is not part of our original measurements. We are not interested in the dart at this stage. So now this is my chest line. CH chest line. So I'm going to measure from here, from the center front, I'm going to measure just before this dart line. So it gave me about 4.1 inches. I'll jump over. Like I told you, the dart is no long, it's not part of our measurements. We just put it there for shaping. It has served its purpose. We have cancelled it out and we are jumping over. Let's start again. This is our center front. This part here is just before the darting. You raise it and continue. You are not including these measurements now because you're going to cut it off eventually. So our chest measurement is about 6.5 based on Simbi's measurement. So half 6.5. But then you know that by the time you cut this clothes into pieces, you're going to join here with half inch. You join here with half inch. So it's better you add extra one inch sewing allowance. That one inch is almost okay. About one inch makes about 2.5 centimeters. So you can either add 2 cm here or one inch, either way, 2 cm or 2.5 cm or one inch. Either way, you're going to use it to join the two parts together and you need to get it balanced. So, to make things clearer, I would simply join this line, this shoulder line, and this one here. We are making our our ample curve gradually so i'll just come here because this this part here is almost negligible it's just too small so i'll just look through it and the round bust measurement is about 34. so based on the rules of mathematics you divide the round bust measurements into four and that gives us about 8.5 so you mark your 8.5 here the round bust measurement is the measurement that you establish on your armhole line. So I don't know how the whites do it, but then this is Africa and this is what we do and this is how it works for us. So you still come down to the bust position and you make it 8.5. So this line right here, I'm going to draw it down. So it gives me a straight line, yeah? right? So Usually, we are used to the armhole line being all curved and everything. Even in my last video about simple dancing blouses, it was all curved. So, but remember the blouse I'm making. The blouse I'm making is kind of sitting like this. So it sits, it's not like a straight kind of blouse. It sits this way. You want it to sit beautifully. What you do is that here I use both divided by four then when I get to my full length what I would use maybe if I got 8.5 here maybe I could use 12 so that I could just have that flare so 12 when I get to the hem I just square down this is my full length line and this is the hem line so I just square it down and connect down and connect so for now we're done with the front the front body so i've just labeled it front and i'm going over to the back side so let's go over to what we did we have the shoulder line uh, neckline shoulder line chest line ammo line bust line on the bust line high waist line and then we have the full length and we have the hem line so we've established we've added a dart to the shoulder is a shoulder darted blouse which means that that's going to be on the shoulder and we are done with this front part for now. So we get back to it. So we continue the back side, and this is about 1.5 inches from the edge. I'm going to use the edge as I, I, I normally call it the zip line. I normally call it the zip line. So I'm just going to start from the edge to measure about 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches. The 1.5 inches is your zip allowance. It's very important. I prefer to use 1.5 inches because I turn my lining with half inch and I eventually stitch my zip with about one inch. 
that way it doesn't get too bulky and it doesn't get too thin so still mark it here ZA when you see ZA next is my zip alarm so the same neck width I used in front is the same I'll use at the back so the net width for the back is about three inches so you mark your three inches you could just go ahead and make that neck box and everything and then you know start constructing what I most times I don't take time to make the neck box I could just decide to draw in anything I want assuming that the lady that has this dress wants a really deep back possibly uh, the one that cuts below her bust line you just you know, just mark somewhere here just how deep however deep you want it to be but just make sure that if it cuts below her bust line that you're using a bra cup and she doesn't have to wear a bra that will not show her bra strap so I just connect it Please do not connect it exactly the same way I did. If, if you could use a curve, a French curve, to do the connection if you want to do it directly, or you could just follow the shaping method I used here. Either way, it's about dressmaking and fashion design is about flexibility. So you just have to be flexible, find out what you use, and go ahead and do it. So this line, right, this is the zip allowance, this is the zip line, and then this line right here becomes the center back line. So I'm going to start measuring from the center back line. Please do not make a mistake of measuring from here. We don't have business with this part again. For now, the only time we'll have a business with it is when we're doing the shipping and you know you're fixing your zipper and all that. So I'm going to come down on the shoulder line and establish my shoulder divided by two. So that's going to give me about seven inches. So you use your short ruler to connect it to be on the safer side. So instead of having an across back, the chest line is more like the across back. But then the across back is usually about one inch bigger than the chest line because the back is obviously wider than the front. So you connect it here. And then the round boss is about 8.5. That's round boss divided by 4. So you connect it and connect it. And I, as a rule, I use the wideness I use here in front and the back. So the wideness I use in front was about 12.5. So I'm going to be using 12.5 at the back, 12.5. And voila, we're good. So we start connecting our lines together. So to enable you get a good curve here, what I do normally is that I'll connect this line and this line. Since I got seven here, I'll just use my T and mark from the center back to this point to get seven. Then maybe you could just do like 1.5 centimeters just to help you get a good curve. That's uh, 1.5 centimeters from this point. Then you connect it like this and connect it like this. You already have a good curve. So, so now we're done. With our back piece and we're done with the front piece. So this is a picture of what the front piece looks like and this is a picture of what the back looks like. So step two is we have stage two, like we have our waist shaping. The essence of waist shaping is to give your boss a good curve. Your boss is like a package you have in front of you and you need to carry it very well. So if you don't have a very good shaping it's either your bust doesn't, your cut doesn't sit so well, or it's looking too pointed. This, this is a very important aspect. So the essence of waist shaping is to be able to shape the sides and also to be able to shape the bust. So let's start. So the next step now is to establish our waist as a rule. The that position in front plus 0.75 inches. Is equal to the dart position at the back when you come again. This is your zip line. I don't want a situation whereby I have to be.